Live from the Pathway Studios in Johnston Proper, you are live from the path. And you're listening to live from the path, coming from the Pathway Studios here in Johnston proper. Kazow! It's good to be with you on this, uh, I don't know, it could be the final evening of 2022. Ooh. We got one more. No, we got one more. <laughs> I thought you were saying like the world is about like, to end. It could. Like, are we doing some end times tonight? Yeah, I suppose. Anybody hear trumpet blasts? I suppose it could be. I suppose it could be. I, I, am, I almost bought a, a yak. You almost bought <laughs> <laughs> Sign of the end times. The horn. The Dan horn. almost bought a yak horn. Oh man, I was looking at him. <laughs> then I thought, I buy so many things that are stupid, and then I don't ever do anything with them. But I, oh man, this so is where the, you drew the line. That's I a conscious like choice, man. I feel like oh. that's the easiest thing to do something with is a yak horn. But uh, I, I mean, just hang out. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I didn't, I didn't. I'm upset that you didn't get it. Okay, oh. it's Christmas is you, around the corner. I can still buy myself that. You've seen so many that. hats and flannels that you've decided <laughs> to buy. Yet once you see a zebu horn or the yak horn, you go, nah. My no family would be excited for me to open that under the tree. This okay, I'm going to look right now <laughs> okay, while you yeah, guys are talking. Dan, that'd be killer. <laughs> I, I'm encouraging of this. I yes. think this is a great idea. Hey, what's the worst? Uh, like, have you ever have you ever bought someone a Christmas present and you thought this is going to be freaking awesome and they're going to love it and then it totally tanked? Oh. Bought something for somebody that tanked. Yeah. I yeah. Did, I did something for my brother when I was a kid that was really bad. I mean, did you buy him a yak horn? <laughs> well, no. We, we we had a sister who died like before uh-huh. we were born. Yeah. But she still had toys on our toy box. Like, and I thought it was hilarious. I took a little nurse doll that was hers and I wrapped it up and I gave, <laughs> I gave it to my brother. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. What? I was a kid. I was, I don't I was care. And I thought this is going to be the greatest reaction ever. And, and it was. It was. It, it, talk about. Here's our deceased it was sister's terrible. Toy. Yeah. Who does that? You. I did. <laughs> but I won't buy a yak horn. I don't think any of us have an answer to this question I, anymore. Based yeah, off sorry. of Dan's. Sorry. I gave my deceased sister's doll <laughs> like, to my brother. I'd like to schedule little Daniel for some time with the counselor. <laughs> oh, sweet. Moses. Okay, oh, man. Are, how uh, young? Like how young were you? Do you know? Ah, uh, probably third grade or something oh I mean, that's way older than i thought you were gonna say yeah, i don't know sorry. why i felt like I, that was a five-year-old move uh, well it was well, eight year old dan yeah that was that was <laughs> yeah, someone who I knew was 22 should, really would have known but should have known better but uh, right. sometimes i do things i think are hilarious that no one else thinks okay is and this the yak horn there it we are started young yeah. my uh, not in my uh, in my situation but like my my uncle brad who was like vehemently against Jesus, like hated Jesus yeah. and was totally atheist, hated my dad because he loved Jesus, got my dad this like Anglo-Saxon Cathol Jesus nightlight <laughs> like, and said, now, you know, Jesus brings light into your life. Now he literally can in any room that you put him in. Mm-hmm. And he thought it was going to be the best thing ever and make fun of my dad. My dad was like, I love it. I love this nightlight. <laughs> and I remember until the day he died, we had that Cathol nightlight in our living room. <laughs> we put that on every single night. As I recall, he also got him a roller skating Jesus. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He got a roller skating Jesus and then uh, a thing called Buddy Christ, which is <laughs> oh, from, from the Dogma. From movie. Dogma, yes. Yeah, so yeah. we had the figurine of Buddy Christ. <laughs> Business. I'm going to get a bunch of uh, really high grade uh, camera equipment and like all these little umbrellas or whatever they use uh-huh. and i'm gonna gift them to her uh because she seems really into this photography photography stuff yeah and uh she returned it all oh no like, the, like a week later she yeah. said yeah i don't want to do this i don't like it that much <laughs> what about you okay uh i was trying to think i i i feel like i bought an a, a, a small appliance oh no for my wife at That's some point move. or another and like I, so here's, use this for me uh i i don't even think actually okay I, my <laughs> wife doesn't listen to the show so she won't hear it but like so this this um my kids keep trying to have me buy her an air fryer yeah for christmas they're like she's gonna really like this i said look right here i cannot buy her an appliance i just can't i don't care if it's a good idea and they're right. like well, it could be from us i'm like i hear what you're saying 
I just <laughs> I can't it works. I cannot be involved in an appliance purchase. I've done this before, and I it's it's very vague in my mind what I purchased, but I it, it wasn't good. Right, is it a Vitamix? Uh, yeah. I did. I did get her a Vitamix, but that was well received. Oh, was it like a toaster? Oven? She was excited about that. I don't think so. I don't remember what it was. Whatever it was, it was right. ill. But oh, but yeah. now but the premise of my question was you thought it was going to be whiz bang and it didn't go well and I'm pretty sure in the back of my mind I thought you do you know this is not going to go well. <laughs> oh. you have to be better than maybe it's a magic bullet <laughs> oh <laughs> nice something like that I'll I, tell you go ahead oh, quite, sorry no you're obviously good. I, I did do that to my wife I forgot about this one <laughs> uh, oh jeez uh, because she was pregnant with with Danielle our first child yeah. and she was Danielle was born in January so this is December right so she's she's at the toward the end. And she was just all she would complain about was how you know, oh man, I've gained weight, blah 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 blah. All, all oh this no, stuff. Dan. And I'm thinking, man, what would a loving husband do but get her an exercise bike? Oh no! <laughs> I got her the best exercise She's bike like the on the market. I was so excited. I thought, man, I am listening to her. I, I am dialed in to what she really wants. Babe, you really want to get rid of oh, that baby weight, man, right? Man, uh, we. Oh boy. <laughs> That I heard about that for years. Um, oh, I'm super excited to live vicariously through you, so I don't oh, ever make that mistake. Oh, don't do that. Don't, oh, don't geez. do that. I tell you the the not not to answer your question, but like the best Christmas gift I ever got that was one of the funniest things I ever got was my grandmother, my nana, is my dad's mom. When I was maybe 15. Now we all know the boo was not a small man. Whatever. When I was a teenager, I was also not small. My nana. Got me a self help book titled Uh Oh <laughs> in big in big red letters on a green book. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Conversations from both sides of the refrigerator door. <laughs> oh, oh, no. dear. oh dear. <laughs> and she handed this to me with a confidence <laughs> that was just on a different level than I'd ever seen before. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Here's your Christmas gift. I'm like, Thanks, You're going to love this. I can tell this is a book. I love reading. Maybe my Nana got me a fun sci-fi book oh, or something no. that I can really get into. Nope. Uh-oh. Conversations <laughs> for both sides of the refrigerator door. Oh. And it really was a you're too fat and should figure this out self-help book. And it wasn't even a good one. Like It looked like she found it in a discount Goodwill bin from like 1948 and was just like, yeah, I'm getting my, this for my grandson, Troy. Oh, oh gosh. When I, like, I, my dad and mom were looking at me when I opened it up and like I could see that we were all trying to just be normal people and just be like, all right, she's an old woman with oh. no class at all. Like... She's trying to be loving, and this is the only way she can figure it out. But I'm, I could not control my laughter as I'm like, this is the, I'm going to have the best fat guy story of all time forever because I have the 15 year old, uh oh, book that most people don't get a chance to have because most grandmas are just like, yeah, he knows. He knows. Like, he doesn't wake yeah. up every morning and go, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> when, did this, when did this happen? Like, what? And so, yeah, uh oh. I still try to find that book every once in a while. I never want to, like, Google it and buy it off of Amazon or anything. I just want to find it at a good way. have just, it, see it in the and wild. And just chuckle on it. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Well, I feel like does someone make a, a wrapping paper with little figurines that have the words, I lack discernment on the outside? <laughs> just so I would buy it personally, just so I could hand the gift over and say, I, I'm just warning you. Uh, I, there's a good chance this is going to hit wrong. I'm not discerning. <laughs> I'm thinking this is great, but you may not. <laughs> you, you got two minutes of thought and a credit card swipe. Here you yeah. go. I'm not a good... I, here's the deal. I'm a good at settling <laughs> gift quandaries. Like, my wife will... will have a you know we'll pick out 15 things yeah. and go, like which one of these and i'm like i'm great at this that one done <laughs> you're killer in a multiple choice I, yes i know how to answer <laughs> boxed in questions but like free form rough stuff try yeah <laughs> just open season actually so we've talked before about trying to build a um trying to build a house at some point and like i just can't imagine it's too it's too much there's too it's too much like i i can I can look at it. If, so if you give me like a, 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 a bare bones house that already exists, it's crumbling apart. I could go, okay, these are my confines. Uh -huh, yeah. I can, I can work within this. But if you said, look, open, open forum, you right. can do whatever you want. I've played Minecraft. <laughs> I, I don't use the freedom in Minecraft. Well, I build, still build a big box, a giant box. And then I look at it and go, okay, now these are my confines. How can I work within oh, these constraints? Man, I, I work awesome. by constraint. <laughs> I don't do presents with him. <laughs> Nathaniel, would you, would you say, um, uh, have you improved over the years at gift giving? Yes, I think. 
I don't know. Yeah, is that no. is that yours to say? I uh nothing that I've gotten her, I think, as a uh as a Christmas or birthday gift uh in my memory, other than that, has been like uh totally shunned and returned. Okay, okay. Oh dang. You know, I didn't give a Christmas gift, uh. but I gave I think an anniversary gift to my wife that I thought was was probably one of the more clever and thoughtful things I've ever done. Yeah. Because it was trying to be cutesy, because she doesn't really care about, like, if I spend money. She's not super worried about having more stuff. Like, we just don't have the room for it. Yeah. And so sometimes, and we were we were very broke for the first uh, bit of our marriage, admittedly. Yeah. Um, and so it kind of just turned into, what's the cutesy thing Troy can do? Like, can I make a nice meal for her or, like, do a cute card or whatever? And I went to, uh, I went to like, a Michael's, and, and I got these, like collect a ticket wooden things that I like made coupons on. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it was supposed to be these cute little things. Like here's a coupon for a free 30 minute massage, or here's a coupon for a date night. Uh, well, your choice fancy or not, whenever you want redeem it. And I have to do it kind of thing. And there were 12 of them. Cause I wanted it to be one for every month of the year. And I thought it was super cute. And I was like, I put a lot of thought into it. They look trash. Because my handwriting is that of a four-year-old rhinoceros. Yep. But like, <laughs> they were great. And I got this little box to put them in. And I gave them to her. And she was like, oh my gosh, I love these. Thank you so much. It's been two years now. And she has not used a single one of those coupons. Oh, yeah. Like, like they she's never not use redeemed them. No. one. Yeah, no. they feel guilty. Yep. What? They won't do it. The yeah, whole right. point I did was it for too. her to I've just be before. served. Yeah, I no. know. Yeah, the kids, yeah. Got, the, the kids have got me stuff yeah. multiple times. And I just, I always feel, um, I don't feel right about using them. They're like, yeah. hey, we'll clean the living room. I'm like, I mean, I can clean the living room. Dang it. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, it, I thought it was awesome. And it yeah. went over killer for about 30 minutes. Yeah. We never yeah. talked about it again until I cleaned off the, the junk drawer and went, hey, these are the things that I put a lot of thought into, actually. Do you remember these? And then she's like, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just don't, like, I just never use it. I think it's, I think it's similar to, like, if asking someone, having someone tell you when they need help. Right, like after a, after a medical event or something like that, oh, like yeah. people just don't tend to volunteer it. Right, you just got. I think it's 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 a similar thing where like you're like, oh man, I really appreciate the thought, but like it, it feels like you handed them a coupon book and then go now admit you're being selfish when you hand one to one of these. Weird. It's not what you're I mean, after I at all, it. and and may not be even someone's hang up, but like ultimately, uh, I think if if you don't, you're always at your best option to just do things. I was gonna say I have to redeem them for. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's it's Tuesday massage coupon night. You're turning it in. Dang it! All right, that's fair. That, I'm gonna do that. I think in that's the way you do it. Those are the twelve months. Yeah, I'm gonna do all twelve of them. You had one per month. Well, yeah, I did. Uh, well, so it was just supposed to be like one for the whole year because it was an anniversary thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. supposed to be okay. a year themed thing. Okay. And I think the year or the theme of the year for your first anniversary is like wood or something. I don't know. I made the wooden tickets. Don't oh, look at me like that. Wood. You can, <laughs> yeah. uh, by Don't the way, like buy the uh oh book on Amazon. Yes, you can. Eight ninety nine. <laughs> hey, that's still going strong. Hey, you know what? You shouldn't have told me. You should have just bought it and sent it to our house. <laughs> I would show up at the door. It's there. I'm like, <gasps> Nana. Nana. <laughs> <laughs> Nana passed away seven years ago. Uh oh. Just sign it up, <laughs> Nana. <laughs> I set this up to be delivered because I knew you were still going to be pretty rough in twenty two. <laughs> Oh, you haven't right. figured it out yet, have you? <laughs> so I, I am interested Uh-oh. if anybody, if you guys want to share on the complaint line, 515-517-0085, call or text. Let me know one, either one, have you ever bought a gift that you just thought was going to be righteous and uh, it, it was terrible? Or Tanked. Um, mm-hmm. someone got something for you and you could tell that they thought they nailed it and they did not <laughs> nail it. I'd be uh, I'd be interested to hear either one of those things. That's okay. uh, live from the Path uh, complaint line, 515 517 Eight, five. That's call or text, That's right? Call, call or, or text. text. Either one is going to be just fine. It's uh, creepy that you leaned into the microphone and said that all quiet like. No, no, it's not. Yes. That's how it's supposed to be done. You don't get to tell me whether or not it's creepy. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, all right. So quick, quick side story. I was at, well, I've been looking for a, a, an oven. I don't know what happened. My, 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 my house <laughs> fell apart over the last week and a half. No. So. Well, like we we uh, there was a leak underneath our sink, and so uh, water got kind of everywhere, and so it got into the tile, and then it got underneath the the subfloor. So yep. it all had to be replaced. So we pulled all the we got all the stuff churned up. Now there's w- nice wood floors underneath it, except for whatever glue they used to put this um, kind of linoleum on top of it after the house was built. But the house was built like in 1908. 
So they view it was it's, it's full of asbestos is the long and short of it. So you got to be careful about taking it out, right? Like you can't just go in there with a with a hammer and just start tearing right. the joint up. So anyway, I finally get the, the the place torn up. Uh, we're moving our fridge in and out so that I can replace the subfloor back there. And then I don't know if you guys ever have hooked up or seen a uh, a water line that goes to your ice maker for the fridge, but it tends to be like a real bendy piece yeah. of copper. Yeah, and yeah. so if it's bent already, you leave it. Yeah, you don't unbend. Because you've probably, although like it got irritated one way, you try to put it back, it, it's going to put a hole in it. So I knew this. My wife did not. And it was like two in the morning. And so she goes, oh, this is bent. And then start to unbend it. And you could see me slow motion. No. <laughs> um, so she unbends it whole. Okay. So now, now there's water. There's going to be water dripping from this thing. And so I got to take, you got to unhook it. Now, again, if you've ever hooked up a, 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 something to your water line, it's like this thing that you twist in that pokes like a hole in yeah. the copper, yeah, yeah. right? And so I, 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 never, I didn't have a concept of this. I think I could have handled this much better, but at the time I thought, like, well, I better, I mean, I gotta take it out of there. Right. And so I take the, because otherwise it's just gonna keep sending water through the, the bent pipe. And so I take it off and now there's obviously a hole in the water pipe. And so, long story short, I have no water. I tried to patch it with some, uh, with some putty. Don't laugh at me. I tried to put some putty on it. <laughs> I said, this is gonna hold me for a while. Held for about 20 minutes. <laughs> And then start shooting water everywhere. At the same same time, same day, there's guys trying to remediate radon at my house because, like, our radon is just outrageous. There's kids growing tails and things at my house. Uh, and so we're getting the radon remediated. Um, moving a stove in and out for the same purpose, something happens. Uh, where they go to plug it back in, and there's, like, a spark. And now, like, the top of the stove works, but the oven does not. Okay? <laughs> also, the dryer stopped drying. Good heavens. <laughs> It just, it stopped. Good heavens. It stopped drying. And so, like, the water and the oven were out at the same time. And so my wife, and my wife was out Christmas shopping, and, like, I don't like to bother. She she doesn't leave the house very often on her own. Yeah. And so, like, for no reason do I try to contact my wife when she's out. I say, you leave her. She needs to think that things are going just fine here. Nobody <laughs> texts or anything. And so we're, like, getting water from the well to try to edit so that we can, so that we, we can, like, wash potatoes. <laughs> Cooking them, try trying to cook them for a family of six in an Instapot. Oh, with, I, it was rough. It was rough. It was a rough go of it. So anyway, I'm trying to sort out all that. I got a part coming for the dryer. I got a. Um, I, I I replaced the section of the water line that I needed to replace. But I'm out looking for a for an oven. Yeah. Because I I tested this oven because I think I'm going to use my skills. I got one of those Nathaniel's. I got the multimeter. I'm like yeah. checking the lines. I said beep beep. You know the thing's going to run. Yeah. And so. Uh, uh, I, everything checks out I, for the life of me. I can't figure out what the problem is, except for maybe this main computer on the oven. And so I order a new one for, or a refurb from the eBay. I said, fine, I'm just gonna swap it out. 35 bucks, pick it up. I put it in nothing. Same behavior. I said, I can't do it. It's, it's Christmas time. It's baking season. The oven's got to run. Okay. So I'm out. So I'm out about, I'm looking at scratching dents. You guys see my text from earlier today? Yeah. Did. Okay. The Lowe's is the place to go for the scratching dents. Anyway. Wait. You said Lowe's? Lowe's. All right, Lowe's. Isn't there a store called Scratch and Dent? Yes. I went. I tried to go there. They're closed on Mondays. Uh, this is what I'm saying. They, they work go. like Italians. Like they're not there. Not, like an Italian <laughs> restaurant. They're not there on Mondays. What? <laughs> Italian restaurants are tend to be closed Sunday, Monday. <laughs> it's not an ethnic slur. Okay. 515-517-0085. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? That's on par with what? Mike's hoobadoo. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> Our Italian restaurants are not closed on Mondays. They are. I mean, I go to the Olive Garden. They're open Monday. Okay, that does not Italian. <laughs> it's like the Outback Steakhouse being Australian. Yeah, anyway, keep tough. going, Ben. Anyway, I'm looking for scratch and dent appliances today. I went to two different Lowe's. And the first two, like they had something I wanted, but one would look like it was taken and the other one was ugly, but it was reasonably priced. So I'm going to go to one more Lowe's. I go to one more Lowe's. This is before the show uh, tonight. And I go in there and there's like nobody on the floor, nobody on the shop floor. And so I'm looking around and I'd like start checking and I finally find one red shirted individual, like four aisles down. And I said, I went, I went to go ask him, say, can you call someone over to the appliance area? And the guy looks at me and goes, can't do it. I'm like, what do you mean you can't do it? Can you help me then at the compliance area? He goes, no, man, I got to cover the whole store. I can't do it. I'm like, I, this is not making any sense to me. Why would you have to cover the whole store? I just need someone to help me with this scratch and dent appliance. And he goes, everybody left. I said, what do you mean? There's no way. I thought it was the weather because the weather's bad. Uh, and he goes, he, uh, so I suggested as such. Oh, I said, the weather getting bad. Everybody got to head out. He goes, no, man, no, the Pope's in town. Whew. I said, the Pope. That happens all the time. I said, there's no way the Pope is in town. 
They're just not possible. Right. And he goes, look, I'm the only non-Catholic guy here. He goes, I worship horses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even believe in a God that looks like a human. Worship horses. Like, like a Pegasus looking thing. <laughs> I didn't ask a lot of questions. I had bigger problems. <laughs> bigger fish to fry. I can't fry them because I don't have an oven. <laughs> anyway, he goes, I said, tell me more about this Pope thing. I need some help. And he goes... I believe they went to this this place. He wrote down, had the address. And I looked at the address. And I mean, I'll be the movie. You'll never, never guess it. you never guess it where the Pope is at. Where is he at? It's in Nathaniel's house. What? I saw I saw the address and I said, and it's, Nathaniel even has moved recently. I don't know if the Pope, I, 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 maybe he was trying to visit whoever was there before. Maybe. But, but I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> Nathaniel's house is a basilica now. It said that the Pope is, is there. So I, went, so I went to Nathaniel's house and there were like all kinds of people waiting out on his lawn. And it's cold. And I must have seen 28 red vests, like the whole Lowe's from this area was out on Nathaniel's lawn. And uh, I said, oh, holy cats. Like the Pope, I, I went to, I, I, Nathaniel let me in. I said, what's going on here, man? He goes, I think the Pope is here. I said, is the Pope legit here? He's like, no, man. Nope. No way. Uh, I said, how are you going to get these people to go away? He said, I got to give them some sort of Pope style advice. I got to tell them something like, uh, like the Pope would. Walk out on the balcony, give them a piece of advice, something that seems like relevant to me and relevant to them. And then they'll I, then they'll leave because the Pope spoke, and so that's what I'm going to do. I said, okay, what Nathaniel? What did you tell him? <clears throat> what I said was, was I told him a tale. I told I told him a a real fine tale, a parable, a par a parable. Okay, uh, a tale of uh, a few months ago. I was at work, and I uh, it was a gusty day across the the midwestern plains. And the wind was blowing something fierce. And there's a sign outside of the uh, building that I work at. And it's a uh, giant uh, blue smile of sorts. And uh, uh, I was notified because I'm in uh, building maintenance uh, that the sign looked like it was falling off of the building. Oh. <laughs> and so uh, I went out there to check. And sure enough, the sign, uh, you could see two of, the, uh, two of the bolts that were supposed to have the sign in the building we're out of the building. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so I said, okay, it's time to uh, pony up and uh, get in the lift. And uh, well, first I had to talk to safety because the wind gusts were over 30 miles per hour and they wanted to make sure I was going to not fall out of the bucket. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't. Uh, so we, uh, after much deliberation, we took the, uh, the lift up there and I got up underneath that, uh, that sign and I looked across it. And there's about 15 bolts that are supposed to be holding this in. Yep. And uh, there are three that are still holding it on the wall. <laughs> and the first thing I thought was, I should probably get out from underneath of this. Because <laughs> uh, the next strong gust that comes on is going to tip my, my lift over uh -huh. as this 800-pound sign falls on top of me. And my next thought was, you know, this is a great Pope-style advice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You may think, how could that be a Pope style advice? Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. Three concrete bolts. Uh, and I thought to myself in an, in an organization in any sort of group of people, uh, just three dudes holding on, doing the right thing. I can make a big difference. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, uh, I've actually found that out recently. Uh, I, I've, uh, I've had some, you know, somewhat of a, a family, uh, health crisis would you call it yeah and out of the you know the 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 people in my life there's been you know just a few people that have uh without them i'd be i've been i'd be in a world of hurt yeah you know what i mean yeah and so uh this is only the second time i've ever done a pope style and the first <laughs> time was also very short uh short but sweet. you know i'm not a blowhard like the rest of these fellas <laughs> That's fair. That, that cuts me deep and righteous. Yeah, half the time, Ben's uh, introduction of the Pope style ends up yeah. being longer hey, than the Pope. The style. irony is missed on you, sir. <laughs> the <laughs> irony is, Buva, is missed on you. Go ahead, Nathaniel. <laughs> yeah. You're a blowhard, too. <laughs> what I'm saying is, <clears throat> sometimes in the past, I felt like, uh, you know, uh, not just uh, most times at work where yeah. uh, people are like, I look around, and I say, I'm the only one doing some good things around here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I shouldn't really, one, put you down because if you're the only one doing something good, then just keep on doing it. Right. Because maybe you're the only one holding things together. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> right. You're probably not. There's probably <laughs> other people doing stuff too. Yeah. Uh, so don't pat yourself on the back too hard. 
but just keep doing the good work. Uh-huh. And then uh, also when it comes to, you know, you know, family stuff and spiritual stuff, uh, sometimes it's hard to just keep going uh, when you feel like you're not making a whole lot of progress or gains. Yep. Uh, when, you know, who knows? Maybe you're the, the, the dude who's just holding it together. You just got to keep plugging away. Uh-huh. Just keep holding on. Holding the 800 pound sign up. Because if you don't, could kill someone. <laughs> Dropping the heavy at the end there. Yeah. I, you know, you know I, I think there's, there's a lot to be said for that. There's a lot to be said for um, like feeling like you have to own the entire context of your effectiveness when you don't. Right. Uh, like, uh, and it's, it's a fair thing because often we want to like we want to answer an internal question, which is, is am I making any difference? Does it matter the things that I'm doing, whether it's a work thing, whether it's a relationship thing, um, whether it's a, a, a kingdom thing? Either way, we're like, is it is is what I do matter? But like, I, I think it's it's a good point to say like some of that's a perspective that's just beyond you. Like you wouldn't know whether that's whether that's true or not. And like, oftentimes the things where it feels like you're not are the types of things you can touch where the, the, the intangibles where you're impacting people positively or holding down the fort. Like if you're the one bolt, you may not know that the other 10 are loose on the other side. Right. Like you may or may not know that. And so like, there is something about just being a, being the old steady Eddie, uh, during a strong gust, um, not knowing that you're actually even caring much more than what you'd expect. Um, but without without your effort and your kind of st- without the steadfastness, um, things could have gone much worse. Sign falls. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I think there is there's an encouragement in that. Just also the so I don't know why it came up in my 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 brain when I was looking at these things, but it was like you know no one has ever thought about these bolts before. Mm-hmm. No one no one has walked in and applauded these bolts and said you know thank you three bolts, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, most of the time, you know. I, you're just looking for a little pat on the back, you know, oh, yeah. a little pat on the head. Yeah. And you don't get it. And uh-huh. you feel down. Uh-huh. And uh, you're just, a, you're a bolt, man. Yeah. You know. Holding on there. I think that's, that's actually uh, super important. Uh, and if, if, if you're keeping a notebook, I know half of you are. So this is, this is for your <laughs> Ben's notebook. Things Ben says you should focus on in 2023 from Ben. Um, is, is saying, is being thankful being thankful f- for the the work of the bolt is that like uh s- sometimes it feels like um we have to be thankful for like above and beyond but like they take as the bolt as an example like it can't do more than what it is like it's just doing what it's right. supposed to do and it's and that's what it's supposed to do that's how it impacts the world and like I-, I think as humans especially the closer relationships we get into we have expectations out of people and we only notice or say anything when they've gone either gone above and beyond them significantly or if they failed them. But like there's there's no there's no acknowledgement of steadfastness without and which is a failure to recognize that in a stiff gust of wind, it takes something to be steadfast. It right. it takes something to hold a consistency when the environment around you is shifting and when the people and relationships around you are shifting. Like it's it, it, it's it, there is something to that for someone not to notice. Um, and, and, and it's, it's not, um, it's easy to miss. It's easy to miss, um, because it, your, your day to day, normal things start to interact with other people's normal things. And you, for, you neglect to realize that normal takes effort or consistent takes effort. It's probably the right, better way to say it. So anyway, like, I mean, if you could be, if we could just be people in, in 2023 who are like, just grateful, we're full of gratitude. Um, and we look around the way and even for things that are assumed or expected and like, am I grateful this morning that my car started? Am I grateful this morning that I've, that I actually got to see the same person at the same gas station for six weeks in a row? Like what? Hey, it's a friendly face. It's a known face. I'm glad they're here. I'm glad I'm here. And I got to see them. Like th- there is a, um, there's a quote that I would screw up, but it, it just like the, it was talking about the effect of prayer. And uh, there was the combination of kind of earnestness, humility, and gratitude. Like, because where you're not grateful for things, you actually tend to miss ways in which God has moved in your mm-hmm. life because you, you, you presumed them like, like you're owed some of those things. And so like being able to be, have gratitude for, um, yes, all those external things, but like, think of, think of the million things that my wife does in a given day or week 
that that never gets any acknowledgement from me because I'm like, well, that's my wife. That's that's what she does. And like vice versa, like fellas, like maybe maybe you've got things. Generally speaking, you're the garbage man. You haul the stuff out to the garbage. Do you need someone following you around all the time going, that's a great job, man. That's a way to go putting that garbage in. Probably not all the time, but like you tell me once every three months, six months, someone, you know, a wife or even a heaven forbid a child goes, you know, dad, I see you always grab that garbage. Thanks for taking care of that for us. Like you, you would sail on a single compliment for months because someone just acknowledged something that you did uh, that otherwise generally goes by. And so and I, I remember thinking, you know, sometimes in, in my marriage where I felt like, man, I just feel like I can't get anything right. And no one acknowledges anything like, like maybe my wife doesn't notice that I've even do anything. I'm trying to do them for her and she doesn't even seem to notice. And then that, that it always hits me right after that. It's like, when is the last time you, did you say something to your wife? Like think what we're all that like, are you giving the thing that you're needing? Don't you think she probably needs, right. don't you think the people that you work with or for probably could use some of that too? Don't you think the person at the, all the different places you interact with or your church family, like, I mean, this is just, this is helpful. Do you just get a little bit of a sale? So someone goes, Hey man, thanks for being you and doing the stuff that you do. Like, I just, I feel like it's just an easy lift to, to be, um, uh, looking for that kind of thing. Um, and so maybe I, I, I let that put your Pope style advice. Just, um, it reminds me of how important that is and how easy I get real jazzed about it. And then I let it go. It's gone again because again, i just have a presumption of how my life is supposed to work. That guy's supposed, yes, it's that guy's job to bring the mail to me. I mean, of course it is, but like, aren't I thankful for it? I don't have to go drive and get mail. Right. Stuff just shows up at my house. <laughs> like I'm thankful. Even like the app review, I, I can deposit checks on my phone. Uh, that's, that's, I mean, they've been able to do it for years. Right. But I mean, every once in a while, I feel like I can just go to the app developer and go, Hey, this is great. Thank you. Thanks for making this available. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just a gratitude as opposed to just presumption about, about what my life is to be like and, and recognize that there's people and effort and time behind all the things that I expect is normal. You don't cash your check via the app. I, I do sometimes just very interesting to go, Hey, mailman who I'm right next to. I appreciate what you're doing. Hey, app developer that has worked on my USA Bank app. Here's a four star review. Hey, great job. Now, like, and hold those things is the same thought. Same. It just it made me laugh. It's, it's it makes sense. It just made me. It's laugh. It's an all around gratitude. Get off my lawn. Cool. Sounds like we had two popes here. Get you off. Know, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you showed up from the uh, from the lows to help me out with this. Yeah, you're welcome. You I know just, how uh, short winded I am. Yeah. yeah. I mean, historically, there has been a time where there were two popes. It was pretty rough, but it happened. No. So. I, I'm a cardinal. It's like Cardinal Foos. <laughs> <laughs> Pope Carson Cardinal, and cardinal Foos <laughs> tag team. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh man, All right. stuff. All right, thanks for hanging out with us. Hey, I I don't know. Maybe you guys are thinking ahead on uh, 2023, and you've got maybe I'd be interested to hear not just the thing that you thought of, uh, maybe, but like I don't know if you've been you've been just thinking ahead and praying ahead and say, you know, I think God's drawing this to my attention. Uh, and like the first of the year is arbitrary, but it's a good a place to start as any on some stuff. And so I don't know. I'd just be interested if you guys want to share that with us. You can uh, again live from the path, uh, complaint and or council line. 515-517-0085, call or text. I'll uh, be glad to hear from you. And uh, just be interested in what you, uh, not don't even think, b- put in the bucket of formality of New Year's resolution, but like, hey, I feel like God's stirring this kind of, this thing as a reminder for me, because uh, maybe other people can benefit from it. We'd love to hear it and uh, maybe share if, if we have your permission. Dig it. Okay. Move it. Let's give out some advice. All right. Dear Life of the Path, my husband of two and a half years was having an affair with a much younger woman for what I believe was about two months. I never suspected. It ended because he got caught. I was devastated and asked him to leave that night. He always seemed uninterested in sex. And when we had sex, it was quick. He had difficulty performing, so of course, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We went to marriage counseling, which didn't help. I decided to stay with him, but I'm miserable. I can't get over the fact that he cheated, and I bring it up all the time. I no longer trust him and wonder why I stay. I love him, and and I don't at the same time. I feel stuck. I was married before, and I feel like a failure. I'm in good physical shape, financially successful and loving. What went wrong? I always felt he was hiding something, but he swears he wasn't. He says this was the first time he's cheated on a woman. He was confused. I wish I had the courage to leave, but I feel, ju- I, but I feel defeated because I just turned 60. Please help. Well, that's a big, that's a big bucket of stuff, Yeah, to be honest. 
um, that I, I feel like we can't possibly do justice in a response uh, in a in a forum like this because like there's a million there's a million questions in there. Um, but maybe if I can help with a few different things, we'll see if this this help get get some things started. Um, somebody somebody cheating on you is always it's always them. It's always them. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know them not wanting to be around. You know in relationship in intimacy with you. I mean, maybe that's you. Maybe you got a terrible attitude, and they just don't feel loving towards you. I mean, that's possible. But like the the being with somebody else, that's entirely on them. There is you do not have to consider what you may have done or driven someone to. Right. Like they own they own that completely, and so it's hard because you want it to make sense. You want to be able, like, sometimes even when things hurt, you'd rather they make sense and hurt than not make sense. Because, like, confusion actually amplifies problems like that. And so I get it. But, like, it, the, one of the things that was is helpful in a situation like this one is to tr is to do your very best. And you, so you're going to have to write it down and look at it because your mind's not going to want to cooperate on some of this stuff. But, like, be able to stare and say, look, their cheating is, was, is not my fault. It's not my responsibility. I did not cause them to cheat. Uh, I be I bear no responsibility here. You, uh, there may be a thousand other relationship things of which you may be responsible for in your own marriage, but I want you to like do your very best to draw a line here, um, because th th a person can cannot be in intimacy with you and still not step out of their marriage, and so that that, that that's on them. Um, so and, and I, I get that 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 doesn't feel like necessarily it's relieving something, but like. I, I, you want to treat you want to treat your relationship issues for what they are and like bringing another because like when you start thinking about the actual what's what happened with somebody else, you're, you're muddying waters. I know it doesn't feel that way, but like who the other person was, how long it went on, what what they did, what they were thinking about, how he felt about it doesn't matter. It just isn't. That's not as relevant than the things that are right in front of you on what is the health of your relationship. Um. The second thing would be, and this is good, this is super difficult, but like you have, you have no shot at, at finding and staying in or staying in, um, a, a marriage of which you're going to bring this up all the time. Yeah. Now you need to work through it. I, did you, did she say counseling? Did they go to counseling and it's not helping? No, I don't think they said anything about counseling yet. Okay, I thought she. Uh, I thought she had said. She we, we, oh yes, we went to marriage counseling, which didn't help. Excuse me, I decided to stay with him, but I'm miserable. Yeah, I mean, I kind of. I'd ask why it didn't help, um, and I would encourage you to like it, this. This is not sustainable. Like something has. To, if it didn't help, then you either need to find someone else, or one of you needs to change your attitude about this counseling or something. But like, you're not going to be able to. Um, you're both going to be miserable. Is all get out if the rest of his life. He feels like he's trying to to do penance for something. I mean, he broke something, and it's gonna like he's going to have to work to reestablish trust. That's definitely true. But like, um, if you're gonna, uh, you're not going to be able to say yes, I want to move on. If every day, every other day, every week, you're not move actually trying to move on from it, you're just kind of bringing it back in there. Um, he, that's just he's not going to be able to recover from that. Right. It's just not. It's not reasonable. Like this is where. This is where biblical forgiveness is just so wild, freaking radical. It's just so outrageous in a situation like this because the biblical, the way that Jesus looks at forgiveness here doesn't even just go, hey, I want to forgive. He goes, I want to relieve pain from someone who caused pain to me. And like, it's, it's, I, it's outrageous. I hear you. That's why Jesus walks the earth and does these things so that we can, our notion of forgiveness doesn't fall short, lower than his human example where we go, it's that much. That's what you're talking about. And it is, it means that like when you say something is cleaned up and like that we're, we can move past this, you can't keep it in your back pocket. You can't bring it out all the time. You can't mention it to them like, and just, Oh, but remember when you cheated on me, like it just, it just isn't going to work. And so like, if you, if you guys are trying to move on from it, you actually have to commit to moving on from it. You can't keep living on that, which may mean that you need to do separate counseling for you on working through what that means because just because I'm saying it and just because it makes sense and just because it's true does not make it easy. But I, but I, I will tell you that there's no way that your marriage is successful or ever comes to a place that be, both of you can enjoy. Um, if that is still looming as a shadow, it actually has to be, it has to be dealt with. 
that's 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 where I'd start. Dan, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know that I'd expand any on that. I think you hit some pretty key key areas there. Forgiveness is key. If 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 you want it to continue, you have to forgive. You you're you're, you're causing yourself pain and him. And uh, I mean, granted, he started it, but but yep. uh, you know you have you have to to work through that. Um, you guess you just have to. So the, the the struggle here is biblically, you do have the option to leave. I mean, he did. He was unfaithful. Mm-hmm. Um, but is that what you really? Apparently, that's not what she wants because she's there. She kicked him out, but then let him back in. It sounds like. Um, so yeah, they 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 just need to work on reconciliation and what that looks like and how that feels and and uh, figure out what caused it in the first place. The uh, why, why why would he do that? Uh, he's old enough to know better. Mm-hmm. You know that they they they're neither one of them are young. They they've been around the block a couple times. So um, yeah, you, you work work this out. Yeah, and I, I would say like I would prepare for, but like I I think what you need to know. Um, is, 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 is he also committed? She didn't say, I guess, is he committed to staying in this marriage? Is he staying? But he and, is, he's there. I mean, yeah, he's I, present and they went to counseling. I mean, is it because he doesn't have anywhere else to go? I don't know. Yeah, I like, mean, it'd be hard to put up with all the, Hey, you remember what you did? Yeah, that's it's true. like, I mean, at some point you're like, yeah, I'm out. Yeah. And I, I mean, would say this and like, I, I, this is tough to hear, I'm sure. But like, um, you can't, you can't stay in there him just out of guilt either. Right. Like I'm just uh, if do you, the question isn't like you're never going to here's 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 the the sad part of it um nothing is ever going to set this right no amount of contrition on this man's part is going to take away the fact that it happened it just is not that's that's true for sin in general now let it roll to a microcosm sitting in this marriage and so like um and you as a as a person on the other side of this thing I, it's it's going to feel good at times to see him feel crappy and feel guilty but I'm t- it just it is not the road to a healthy marriage. If you want if you want something back that I'll be, just has the possibility to be better and stronger than it was, it just does. Um, it starts with the fact that like you you cannot base it upon well now I have I have this over him and he looks and feels guilty and I can use it whenever I want to. That's not a healthy marriage and it never will be. And it can't it do, it doesn't it doesn't start now and get better. It just does not grow from there. It dies there. And so. Um, I I know it. I, I was sorry. This is just on my mind because I think we were we were just talking through it recently when we were talking through some of the beatitudes and just like like the notion of peace and the notion of mercy and forgiveness. It's just it's way it's way more than you think, and it's hard. It's hard work because it it it, it turns over control for what has hurt you over to Jesus and says, not yeah. only do I expect him to take care of it, but I I also am absolving myself of be having to be the recompense for it. I don't push I don't push thumbs and wounds to teach people lessons. God does judgment and God does I think God do, can use guilt. I think that's but it, it's his realm. It's not a people realm to do. God can lay burdens on people's hearts that they that cuz he won't let go of them to get them to like to come to attention. Absolutely. But humans, I think we can't handle it. I think we can't handle the right judgment part and I think we cannot handle guilt correctly. And so I don't deal in it. Well, I try my best. I'm bad at it. Actually, this is, I, this is one of the places I catch myself. I, I'll do it, and I don't even want to do it, but I'll notice it myself. And so I'm just, what I'm saying is, is that, like, it can't be, do I feel like I have the upper hand in this relationship? That's not a healthy marriage. If you want a healthy marriage, you're going to have to figure out how to work on what is true between the two of you going forward and and use this as a springboard to correct the things that otherwise made him feel justified in this. He's wrong, like I said, but there are there have to be some relationship. Well, actually, I take that back. Oftentimes, um, and this is true for, like, it's, it's more often, I think, for men than for women, although I'm open to being wrong about this, but, like, sometimes guys just, I mean, they, they don't even have anything. They're just, they just followed an urge somewhere and acted stupid and acted foolishly. And, like, women... I think often want like there's something deeper. What what did I need to change about myself? What went wrong in our marriage? And like, I, there's just some guys in some situations where like there's just nothing you could have done. They they weren't even they're not rebelling against something. They're not turning from something wrong that you were or are or did or uh, they're not even unhappy. They're just right. wrong, and it's it's hard to conceive that people can behave this way. But it is men. We're just they're just prone to wrongness yeah. and foolishness. And so 
I, but, I, but I'm guessing that there's some things that even outside of this probably need repaired um, or have before this even happened in the marriage. And so those are the things to focus on. I, I know the, the, the cheating part seems like the big thing, but the reality is if you care about the future, um, I would, I would try to without moving. I'm trying to be sensitive here that I'm not just saying it's not nothing, yeah. but like you're, you're going to have to be able to, to commit to moving past it. Otherwise you just won't move past it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Secular says you are not a failure. Your husband is the surest way to find out what went wrong and begin rebuilding your self-esteem would be to f- discuss the, in- this entire scenario by yourself with a licensed marriage and family therapist. The reasons you haven't left this marriage may be that you are self-conscious about your age or think nothing is worse than being alone. Life does not end at 60, and this is worse than being alone. Yeah, I, I've had, had that that, um, that answer, that guidance has no hope in it. Right. Um, and I, yeah, I, I don't know enough to know whether that's the case. But, I mean, there's, al- there's always hope. Yeah, that's a coroner report waiting to happen is all they're, they're yeah. suggesting. Yeah. Yeah, I just I, I think God, some of this stuff is is debilitating and like what it does to people and how they think about themselves is very dead. This is a, that's why I started where I started is that like it's just as much as you can see and think of, again, put it on paper. This is not I'm not responsible for this. This person makes their own decisions like it's very difficult not to feel like it's at you. Right. Because it feels like they're cheating, not just with someone else, but against you. I just I'm just trying to create some space for man behavior that sometimes it ain't, it ain't even remotely against you. Right. It's just flat out selfish. I, I find that with um, just, just talking with various fellas, to be honest um, about pornography, same deal. It's not, they're not unhappy. They, they're not unsatisfied in their sex lives. They're not struggling with like, they don't like their wife or they're not attracted to their wife. Like it's not that it's, just, it's just something else. It's a curiosity. It's a selfishness. It's a, like something other than that um and i mean some of those fellows could not have been being honest but like it's it's a pretty consistent pattern right um and so i i think it it goes into the realm of cheating as well okay you another one yeah let's do it dear live from the path i am a 55 year old male with five siblings ranging from 45 to 63 years of age i'm the only one who is single i don't live close to any of them although they've lived reasonably close to each other i'm in regular contact with all of them and see them at least once a year My issue is that I'm tired of hearing about all their family drama. They all seem to be upset with one family member or another for whatever ridiculous reason. How can I remind them that having each other around is a blessing? Living alone on the other side of the country is, admittedly, very lonely. I plan on retiring in the next couple of years and had always thought I'd move closer to them. But now I'm afraid of becoming one of the pawns in their who are we all mad at this month game. Any advice? You don't have to participate. (laughs) (laughs) It can't be that easy. I, I mean, <laughs> there's no way it could be that you easy. Live. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't let that stop you from moving. Yeah, if you want to move, move. But yeah, yeah. If this is the thing that stops it. That's, a that's lame. fine too. And if you don't want to, then come up with a better reason. Yeah, right. Like, oh, I like the weather here. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, be a snowbird in Florida. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah. You, you're, there's always drama. There's families have drama, and, and there's lots of family members and, and you just, you know, you don't have that. So you're great. You're blessed that way, but you don't have to participate. It's really that simple. It really is. I can't think of a, you know, right. Anything deeper. Just don't, just don't. When they start <laughs> doing depends. the drama, just say, yeah, I really, I'm, I'm not interested. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, I, I like Joe. And uh, so I don't need to hear anything that's going to make me think otherwise. Yeah. Change I, the subject. Yeah, that's, uh, it is different. Actually, this goes to something we were talking about just before the show started. Is it like, um, it's hard to be a, a, a person in a situation where uh, people are trying to stir up drama and, and to hold the line and just go, no, it gets awkward, right? Because like, sometimes just drama loves company, just like misery. Yeah. And, um, and, and people like some, especially when it comes to families, um, they tend to like one up each other on who's got the most drama siblings mm-hmm. and you're like, it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay to bail. And, but here's where I'd be careful is that like, um, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just don't yeah. participate in the drama. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, you know, stick to questions that, you know, aren't drama yeah. things. Hey, how is so-and-so doing or whatever? And then once it secures into drama, it goes, okay, well, I, you know, I'll be honest. I don't really care about that part. Like it's, it's right. okay. Yeah. P- people will catch on eventually that you're not here for drama. 
And that's true everywhere. I mean, at work, yeah. uh, and the, the neighborhood gossip, the, I mean, in, in any setting where there's people, they're going to, there's going to be people who want drama and you can completely choose to just yeah. not play the game. Yeah, and it drives them nuts when you do it, but it's fine. Yeah. It's, it's like, fine. It's why, fine. Why, Put that why? fence up and hold it. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and it feels and and it feels uh, like people who are doing that, it tends to be you know more personal type of information, and it feels like you're rejecting something sensitive to like not engage in that conversation. But like it's just you just don't have to if it's not fruitful for them and it's not fruitful for you, then you don't have to feel like you you don't have to do it. And people will be offended by that. Like uh, just be prepared that like oh so and so was standoffish to me or someone so doesn't ever like have deep conversations with me. But like. You have to be comfortable in your own reality to be able to say, no, I, I just rejected getting in the middle of a conversation of which right. I don't belong and which is not healthy and which is either straight up gossip or drama and I'm not going to do it. And it's you're going to have to be okay with it. And it's hard. I've been on the other side of it. It's hard. Yeah, you're not being unloving by not being willing to do that. You're actually being loving by not being willing to be in conversations that are destructive and that will that are just causing fires. Yes. You know, Yep. that's all it is. So yeah, so yeah it's okay. Um, just do your best. I like have as healthy of a relationship as you will. Don't don't um, miss out on these yeah. relationships and uh, with people just because of that type of behavior. But just uh, know where your line's at. Draw it and keep it. I dig it. Secular says few families are completely free of issues, but successful ones manage to maneuver around them. Reminding your siblings how fortunate they are to have each other so close geographically should be raised privately with each of them, so you can explain your reasons for saying it. It might be the wake up call they need. Use the next two years to decide where you want to live without being too close and plan on cultivating relationships outside the family through activities you would enjoy so you are not completely dependent on them. Yeah, I don't I'm I'm a little bit hesitant that the um proximity is that big of a deal. Like right. unless you're living in their basement or next door, if you're if you're uh, even 5 minutes away, what do you think they're all going to get together in a right. drama bus and come to your house and you knock on the door? You can live across town and not see somebody. It's not yeah, that hard nowadays. Totally. <laughs> it's really not. Yeah. Yeah, heck, I mean, you can live you can live next door to someone and still not run into them all the time. <laughs> yeah, DoorDash yeah. a lot, and there's a bunch of delivery for groceries. You never have to run into each other at the fairway. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, I, I'm not so much worried about the proximity. I think you need to set the boundaries wherever you're at. Whether Absolutely. it's phone, you know, holidays, whatever. Just hold them and keep them. Yep. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, one more. Dear, live for the path. While my sister was incarcerated, she was evicted from her her residence. Yeah. She asked me if I would pack her belongings and store them for her in my garage for a couple of weeks until she got out, okay. which I did. Well, a couple of weeks turned into a couple of months. Always does. She's out, <laughs> she's out now, living here and there, and looking for a job or a permanent place to stay. In the meantime, her belongings are still in my garage. It's taking up considerable space and starting to smell. <laughs> I, <laughs> what? I need to prep my house as I plan on selling it in the near future. I constantly ask about her removing her belongings and what her plans are, but she doesn't seem concerned about them and no longer communicates with me. During our last conversation, I gave her two weeks to get a place to move them or I would dispose of them. She said she'd get back to me, but hasn't. She doesn't seem to want to get a job or take responsibility for herself or her stuff. I feel she's being inconsiderate and selfish. I know she has some keepsake items in the boxes. I hate to dispose of them, but I cannot store her stuff much longer. What should I do? Okay, I I think there's... Well, hold on. I have some thoughts. What do you guys think? <laughs> How selfish yard sale. Person. Uh, yard sale? But there's keepsakes, Nathaniel. Well, I mean, what are we talking about here? Like, uh, Precious photo moments. albums? Precious moments and photo albums. Yeah. Uh, no one's going to buy those at a yard sale anyway. <laughs> uh, so just, you know, if it's like one album, keep it. You know, hang on to it for when uh, old sis gets her life up back on track. Uh, and if it's like a bunch of photo albums, like she doesn't need all that anyways. So keep the good ones. <laughs> Nathaniel's trying to take a very logical approach to this. He draws, rest. he draws a hard line. Yeah. It's like, get that stuff out of your garage. Like you it have stinks. No, you have summer 97 and summer 99. You don't need summer 98 too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You barely changed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you grew a foot during that, that month or a summer, maybe keep it. But, uh, interesting, you know, okay. I, I want to know what's, what's smelly. Is it food? Is it, is it clothes? I mean, get rid of all that stuff. Get, the, get rid of the any organic matter. Yeah. But uh, you know, you can you can hold on to some yeah. keepsakes. It I can't kept be your that point set up for two seasons now. Well, <laughs> I, 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 it's just kind of weird. Like the first thing I thought of when she said it's starting to stink was is most likely the other direction. Like her stuff, my garage 
is starting to cause her stuff to smell like a garage. Right. Like, Otherwise, it doesn't start to stink after a few weeks. Like, it yeah. either stunk when it got there. That comforter went moldy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that bag of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you pack the cottage cheese? It's a weird deal. <laughs> you just throw that away. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ben, what are your thoughts? Okay. So, I think there are, there are, there are multiple things that are true at the same time in here uh, that, that can go together. The first one is... I'm confident that this person is overreacting about the space about the space in the garage. It's a considerable amount. She's just itchy. She just is is worried. She's I'm, feeling used. Yes, that's right. She's feeling used, but it's not. What is she walking into the garage every day and go? Oh, I can't believe her stuff was there. <laughs> like it's just. It's probably not inconveniencing her. To Dan's point, yes, yeah, she's feeling used, and she's feel like she's being taken advantage of, and she doesn't. She feels like she's being disrespected, and yep. so. She's she's created an arbitrary urgency. Like I'm going to put my house on the market soon. I'm yeah, sure in the near future. Yeah, whatever. And so I, I, she's amping that up to try to push something that this nonchalant, irresponsible sister of hers is not particularly worried about. So one, she's overreacting. Two, she has every right to say you can't keep your stuff at my place. Right. She can do like every right to do that. Um. I would say, however, if you know that your sister is not in the right mind, let's say you're just the more logical party. You're the more thoughtful party. You got your life together. Sometimes it is behooves you to protect people from themselves. And so like I, I've, I've been in situations, well, actually very, very similar situations. Like I've constantly had people's stuff stored somewhere at my house and like, you know, I had to walk by it and go, uh, this stuff is still sitting here. Now, where is it at? In my basement on the side of the garage. It's not bothering me at all, to be honest, except for this person is taking advantage and not caring that they're been, that they are using up spaces and it sucks and it's irritating. But like, I also know if this person is, is kind of the situation that she's explaining could, could be drug use, could just be flat out irresponsibility. Like at some five years down the road, 10 years down the road, when they get themselves clean and straightened out, are they going to regret having not held on to something? Probably. And if you know that, can't you just do it for them? Can't you go, look, I'm not keeping your old bed stand and I don't care about these blankets. These things you're going to care about whether you realize it or not. And so because I love you, I'll go, I'm going to probably move them out the garage. I'll put them in the basement and that's where I'm going to put them. That's good. And so I, you can do both. It's okay to draw a hard line if you want to, but like I, I, I just go ahead and keep some things that you know you're protecting them from, and then things that are just they're just junk. You know, if if you think there's a reasonable trajectory that they're going to leave, then uh, then I'd hold on to them as long as you possibly can if they're not that really bothering you. Um, if you think they're just jacking around and they're never going to come get the stuff, then I mean it's okay to put them to it and go, hey, I'm going to get rid of this stuff. You got two weeks, and after two weeks, get rid of it. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay, because like here's the thing: most of most folks who are living that kind of transient stuff, like they, I think, they probably should get new stuff anyway, <laughs> right? Like mm -hmm. their stuff isn't very good, <laughs> and so like there's no reason to hold on to it. And so if you care about it, come get it. If right. not, I'm going to get rid of it. And they're probably like, I actually probably don't care, and it's fine. True. And for the wayward family member, you got to realize that that bed frames and nightstands are a lot easier to get than you think. Like toss yeah. it. Yeah. And and in five years when they come to you and go, hey, do you still have my stuff? You go, no, but like we can go to Goodwill real quick That's and get right. back. I'll help literally you. anything that I threw away. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I knew you were going to be on the on the bender for a little while, so I, I tossed this deal. Yeah, I, I kept all your keepsakes. They're in a shed, or they're you know they're downstairs in the basement in a corner that I don't like to look at. But yep. you know, when it comes to the mattress that was going to be gross by the time you got back to it, it's gone. Yeah, we'll get you a new one. No worries. Yeah, and like even if you can even take an intermediate step if you have to and go, look, I'm going to go, I'm going to move it. I'm going to go put it in a storage locker. I'm going to pay for two months. Yeah. After that, like they now it's kind of out of your hands because after two months, if you don't pay, like they'll just take it and sell it yeah. to somebody else. Right. <laughs> and so you don't even have to take it to the They can go anything. auction for their own stuff at that time. Yep. Yeah. So like, I mean, there's multiple ways to do this. I just, just know that two things, like multiple things can be true at the same time. It's okay to take a hard line on stuff that you know is junky. Uh, you don't have to take responsibility, but make sure you're not arbitrarily amping up the consequences just because you're you're pissed because yeah. you're being feel like you're being used and recognize that you're dealing with someone who's probably i mean what you what you told me was they were in prison uh or incarcerated came back having trouble landing a job maybe don't even seem particularly motivated to do one their life's going to be bouncy for probably yes. a number of years here you and if you've got a solid head on your shoulders 
it's okay to think lovingly about that as opposed to rendering like bringing to bear every consequence of their their misdeeds yep. right now Bring because I, i'll tell you this you're not proving anything to them you think you're te- again it's the thumb on the thing you're not teach you think you're teaching them a lesson you're not you're not yeah you're making it worse that's right so so just but but it's okay to be again don't put the thumb on it but if you go like if you have if you were putting your house up for sale and you did need this stuff out of there it's okay to say that you got two weeks i got to get this stuff out Come get it, otherwise I'm giving it away, and then give it away. Right. Yeah, it's not a thumb. That's a normal consequence, but it's like, hey, I'm thinking about sometime in the future, I may sell my house, and you got one week to come pick this stuff up. That's a thumb. You're just doing it because right. you're man. It's a seller's market. Get this crap out of here. And, that's, and, and, and think about it this way, too. That's because part of that is that it's not healthy for you. The reason I think that human beings can't deal well with guilt is what it does to them. Mm-hmm. One, we don't do it right, but two, the feeling of superiority that says, I'm going to be the one that turns the screw. I'm going to be the one that makes them feel just a little bit worse about themselves for a little bit longer than they do naturally just to make sure they learn the lesson. I don't know that that, that doesn't create something good in you. That creates something black in you. I don't know how else to say it. It just creates something dark in you to have that sort of power over someone and to want to see it turned. And like it, feel, it won't feel near as bad as what I'm saying. You're like, I just, that's how they learn their lessons. Uh, but I, I just, I think it's not good for a human being to, to be in that position. Yeah, you're not I, the teacher. I, I, I just, I, I just don't, I just think it creates something negative in you. And so I, I, I don't think you can handle it properly. And so you shouldn't. Okay. Secular says, inform your sister that if her things are not out of your garage by a certain date, that you will have them removed by a junk removal service. It isn't free, but it will solve your problem about readying your property for sale. End. I mean, junk it, removal services are so expensive. They are. They, I mean, they are crazy. Make expensive. friends with a buddy with a pickup. That's all you got to do. Mm-hmm. Pay him in a pizza and beer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or even that. They're not your real friends if they require beer. Here's Pizza's the fine. Everybody who buys a pickup knows what they're getting into. Truth. If you advertise that you got a pickup, you're advertising that your pickup yep. is available for use. That's right. You either keep it to your place and never drive it outside yes. of your own yard. As soon as you drive it to the gas station or to a friend's house, now everybody and knows. If, if you have an old busted up F-150, everybody knows that it's already busted so they can throw their real crap in. Yeah. It. I'm going to remove rock. <laughs> Where's that guy's truck? Yeah. Yeah. That thing has a pickup. Now, I've got a bunch of junk from my sister and Dan, it smells bad. You have a relatively recent truck. Do you feel like you're, are you getting roped into moving crap for people? No, not too often, really. Yours is all right. What? Yeah. I mean, it's just, everybody has trucks. I had a yeah. truck That's for a year and a true. half and it was on the rent every weekend. Yeah. yeah. No, oh, Dan's goodness. right. There's there's a wide proliferation of trucks in the area, and so maybe you just know someone else. Yeah, then they know people who are less busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm like, well, oh, right. I can't do it this day or that day or that day or that day. Mm-hmm. That's true. When I had my truck, I was just a college kid, yeah. and so it made sense for people to just be like, "Hey, man, I need to use that truck." I'm like, crap. Bye. I just tend to swap. I'm like, you take my truck, you leave me whatever junk box you drive. <laughs> It gets me out all kinds. Of, like, I suppose that makes sense. Yeah, that's what I should have done. Yeah, that way I'm not uh, I'm not uh, tied up on um, like when I can do it. That's, I, I think the situation was is they'd look at me and they go, "That guy's got a truck and can lift whatever I need to put into it." Yeah. Can you pick up a fridge by yourself? Oh, kind of. I need to move a Davenport. <laughs> yeah, Are you exactly. available? Yeah. You can throw that in the back. Take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, you've been listening live from the path. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. I uh, very much appreciate it. Now, listen. You remember I- from. Uh, was it a week ago? Last last show, uh, we, we're we're trying to we're trying to frame up for this uh, 500th live from the path episode. So if you've got any stories, uh, ways that the show has impacted you, positive or negative, because I think the negative ones are funny. Like I'm a worse person for having taken this in. I think that's fine. You should just say that. Do it to the complaint Please line. Please tell us that five one five five one seven zero zero eight five. Uh, if you want to go so far as taking a, uh, uh, a quick clip of yourself as a video, then that's fine. That would be great. And I think we can incorporate that. But, uh, obviously if you've got good things to say, that's exciting, but, uh, any, anything's workable and usable, I think. So if you want to do that, just in preparation for uh, a compilation on the five other show, that's coming right up. I think we've got maybe 10 more episodes. I have to look at my count, nine, nine, 10 more episodes, something like that. So coming right up. And so we'd love to hear from that. In the meantime, uh, be faithful in the means. God will handle the ends. You've been listening to Live in the Path.